Hey, what is going on guys? It's DK. Back at you with another video here to break down the 11 game NBA main slate on Wednesday. If this is your first time watching, welcome. My name is DK. I make content for DraftKings for NBA Top Shot and for prize picks. If you are looking for more in-depth content for DFS, I do offer that on patreon.com. More info is down below. We sponsor this video, guys, is Roast Umber. Make sure also to check out the win or tilt show that me and Mark have been doing the last couple of days, going over some of our favorite plays from prize picks um, and uh, doing some coffee giveaways. So um, if you guys are interested, uh, you can use uh, in Roast Umber, you can use my code DKDFS for 20% off your order really quick. I got a tilt about this because this was a five pick power play we gave out. 0.2, really? 0.2. Oh, but okay, let's take a look at my lineup here from tonight before um, we go over um, before we go over the slate for tomorrow. So gonna be a solid night uh tonight so let's go over the build here um and it could have been a huge night if rudy gobert sat it, it could have been a massive massive uh night i took the risk on greg monroe gobert ended up playing but to be honest it was worth the risk i got a one percent on greg monroe so talk about that for a bit on the patreon stream what if rudy gobert didn't play well monroe was ahead of pascal on the depth chart most likely starts at one percent ownership and breaks the slate right so it was a 50-50 chance Gobert sits or not. I'm taking that shot on a guy like Monroe. Um, and we did get confirmation from Quinn Snyder that he was going to be in the rotation. So, um, yeah, it was worth the risk to me. He might only end with like 10 to 15 fancy points, but um, it was it was worth a shot because if Rudy Gobert doesn't play this game, you could honestly 30, 40 fancy points to Greg Monroe, right? Even though he's washed up, he's a guy that's going to be productive he's on the court. In Utah, they said they want to have a traditional center out there at all times and, and white sides out. So, um, going over the rest of my lineup, uh, I had a core of Luca, Malik Monk, Sato, and Andre Drummond. So that went extremely well. Um, we, we, we talked about the potential for the blow for Luca, but he still smashed. Um, I talked about really liking Giannis. I like the Giannis and Bede pairing in that Philadelphia game because that was a super important game for seeding. And I thought it was going to be played kind of like a playoff game. And Giannis uh, and Bede both had good games. So Giannis especially, an absolute smash, 75 fancy points at low ownership, 27%. Now, the Lakers, a 13-man rotation, really. Two games ago, they run an eight-man rotation with LeBron out. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to play three Lakers value. Frank Vogel, dust off Kent Bazemore, and the, the actual absolute dust of Trevor Ariza. Send him to the retirement home. I mean, wow, is he ever dust. But, yeah, they just played every guy in that bench, like, really – really but uh yeah monk still smashed Mello only played like 10 minutes so that's why he didn't get there if he played his normal 25 to 30 minutes with lebron out he would have had a solid game tht i mean you can't make some of this stuff up i play an extremely low owned tht three fouls in five minutes in the first half loses huge minutes unbelievable stuff um now Dwight Howard was was one guy I talked about a good good amount I mentioned him in the YouTube video too that I was like I don't think the Lakers need Dwight here uh in this matchup against the Mavs the reason he played a good chunk of minutes last couple of games because it was against a traditional center in Embiid and in Jonas Valanciunas this is against Maxi Kleba and Dwight Powell they they didn't need him out there right and he was massive chalk uh, around the industry so that was one that I was uh, I was not convinced Dwight Howard was going to get the minutes. Um, and again, projections, sites, they were projecting really well. I didn't agree with it. I was like, I'm worried about Dwight Howard's minutes in the spot. Um, and sure enough, he played like five minutes. So you can, there are advantages you can take, uh, or you can take advantages of things like that uh, matchup wise, right? I don't think sites really, um, you know, take into account matchups, um, you know, sometimes. So that, that was just a miss in my opinion. So um we uh yeah that was nice fading chalk to white and him barely playing um let's see what else what else uh we talked about monroe why i went there right again gobert doesn't play i have potential to take down it's been a two three x at least but uh i could have had a really really big night um and then you know just the ownership in the slate game there's no ownership because people weren't willing to take risks 
Uh, you know, Rudy Gobert, I kind of was like, if Rudy Gobert plays, he's underpriced. He's going to be a good play. Um, no one played him. So, like, there's just no ownership in this late game at all. But, um, yeah, I think that's going to wrap it up uh, for the look back uh, in high stakes. Again, this is in the Hall of Famer. Um, let's see. Porzingis is 40% owned. He was fine. Uh, let's see. What else? Gobert only 13%. Again, he's on pace for a solid game, only 7,300. Marvin. Okay. Oh. You remember a couple of videos ago, I said, whenever there is someone that is chalk that I don't have and they get in foul trouble, they stay in the game. So let's, let's rewind a couple weeks ago, right? I play chalk Marvin Bagley, gets in foul trouble, comes out of the game because he was in my lineup, right? And then some guy was roasting me on Twitter, oh, well, you're a chalk donkey playing Marvin Bagley. Whatever. That guy's a loser. Um, so he's massive chalk in the slate, 62% owned. Looking at my phone, begin the third quarter, picks up his third and then his fourth. And I'm like, yes, let's go. Massive chalk. Marvin Bagley just picked up his fourth foul to be in the third. This is great, right? He's going to miss huge minutes. Love this. He stays in the game and plays his whole shift in the third quarter. I mean, you actually can't make this up. I play Chalk, Mar I play chalk Marvin Bagley a few weeks ago, gets in foul trouble, comes out. Massive Chalk Marvin Bagley that I don't have, gets in foul trouble, stays in the game. Someone make it make sense. I, I just, he's still busted. He's still busted, but still, that was just, I mean, like, you can't make that stuff up. Um. All right, what else? What else uh, ownership-wise? Uh, Santa Rancy got a good chunk of ownership. Do we have Dwight Howard, 50%. Right? I talked about in the YouTube video. They didn't need him in this matchup. Um, but, yeah, Luca 63%. He was massive chalk. We expected that. But uh, yeah, that's it for the look back, guys. So let's uh, move on to this 11-game slate. So Dallas and Cleveland, tougher spot here for the Mavs, but Luka Doncic definitely in play 12K. He did get a price bump, and the matchup not as good, but obviously you can play Luka any single matchup. Uh, Brunson and Dinwiddie, more secondary options. I have no interest in Dorian Finney-Smith. Bullock, you know, he does hit a ceiling. He can knock down a shot, but a low floor if he can't hit a shot. Powell and Cleveland should split the seven minutes, so they're both fair contrarian values. On the Cleveland side, a little bit more interesting. So no Mobley and no uh, Jarrett Allen. Um, Cleveland in this situation, if, if he was available, you know what would happen here, right? Oh no, it wouldn't be Kevin Love. It would be insert Dean Wade in this starting lineup, but nope, Dean Wade is out for the season. RIP. But, um, yeah, so Kevin Love should start like the only other big they really have is Moses Brown. So, uh, yeah, Kevin Love 6.9 K. Assuming he starts probably plays 35 minutes or so. I think he's a really good play at this price point. He's going to play basically all his minutes at the center. So. Um, I like Kevin Love quite a bit. Marking at 6'5 is a fair play. He's going to play probably big minutes, I would assume, like low to mid-30s. Um, Karis LeVert has been starting last couple games. He's been playing over 30 minutes. I think he's a solid option in the mid-range. Okoro should play big minutes, but, it, but it's Isaac Okoro. Again, Moses Brown might get some backup five run. I don't think it's necessary, though, to take a risk on him. Stevens will be in the rotation, but he's not going to do a ton when he's out there. So mainly Kevin Love that I like in the Cleveland side. Orlando and Washington. I'm looking at you, Chumo Kiki, right? And we went over this. Last three or four times I faded him this year when he was chalk, when you know, one of the bigs, Magic Bigs was out every time. He's getting three, four steals, three, four blocks, right? He's just getting all those. Finally bought into him a couple of games ago against Sacramento. No Carter Jr., just a cardio game. Uh, both no Carter Jr., you, su you should see Chumo Kiki start. I think he's a fair option there in the midrange. Cole Anthony does have a ceiling. The minutes are there. Now, you got to be careful. Some of these teams, right? The Magic have nothing to play for. So there's no guarantee that he even plays over 30 minutes. But if I knew for sure that Cole Anthony was getting like 30 to 35 minutes, I would say he's a pretty good tournament option here. Because no Carter Jr., he should have, you know, more usage. Mo Bamba, we know is a ceiling too. But also, again, they closed with the backups last game. So floor is still there. Um... Mo Wagner, again, uh, if he gets extended run, uh, we know he's good point per minute guy, but I don't know if it's necessary to go to him on the slate. 
Fultz are really taking it easy on his minutes. Hampton should continue to start, but um, it's RJ Hampton. I think we can probably find better value on uh, this slate. Moving on to Washington. So Porzingis was massive chalk today. He was fine. He's hit, price went up a little bit. Like the spot, should play 30 to 32 minutes. So I think he's, once again, a solid option. Um, I like Tomas Sanoranski again. I think he's a little bit too cheap. Should play, you know, 25 to 30 minutes. Should start. Again, no Neto. He's been out of the rotation last few games. So I think Sato's a pretty safe value. Denny's been playing extremely well at the bench. I have no issue if you want to go to him in the mid-range. Uh, but other than that, not a ton else here. Gafford will play the backup five. He's a fine contrarian value play. Ishmith will play the backup point. Fine contrarian value play. Kispert should start and play around 30 minutes. He's just a fair value. So a lot of, you know, playable guys. But no one, uh, you know, outside of Porzingis, Denny, and, and Sato, nothing that really stands out. Denver and Indiana. So Nicole Jokic, 12-4. Um, it's a phenomenal matchup. He should be able to feast against the likes of Goga or Jalen Smith or Terry Taylor or Jackson. Like whoever they, whoever's out there, Jokic should be able to just have his way. So as long as game stays competitive, you do have to factor in the blowout risk, but this game is being played at Indiana. So a slightly better chance it is competitive. So really, really like Jokic. Aaron Gordon had like 80 fancy points in the first quarter, but then did nothing really the rest of the game. I guess he still had a solid game, but he literally would just did everything in the first quarter. It was so tilting. Uh, feels like a chase if you go there. Barton, Morris, yeah, I just don't know if it's necessary to go to either of them. Bones Highlands played well off the bench. I will mention Boogie. You know, there's a chance this game blows out. Um, he's going to be super productive when he's on the court. And if the game does blow out, uh, you could see Boogie Cousins break a slate at 3.9. So he's always someone I'm intrigued by in GPPs. On the Pacer side, still some question marks. We have Gogo. We have Jackson questionable. Brody in the head. He's not playing. He's not playing for the rest of the year. Stop. Li just list him out. Right? He's not playing. Um, but yeah, Halliburton healed, uh, should play big minutes of the game to the competitive. They're both fine GBP options. The bigs, it depends on Gogan Jackson news. It's a little bit hard to say right now. Um, it, you know, so the rest, the rest of the Pacers Valley, don't know if they get to anyone else, uh, but it is dependent on Goga and Jackson. Miami and Boston, so two really good defensive teams going up against each other. So not a ton that I love. I think Jimmy and Bam should play big minutes. They're fine options. Heroes played well off the bench, but doesn't really stand out to me. Robinson, Martin, both questionable. If Robinson can't go, you know, we did see Struss start last game, play 30 minutes. He could be a potential value, but he is scoring dependent. So Miami, pretty un uninteresting team. Kind of the same thing with Boston. Rob Williams is out, but I don't really know if it does much for me. Brown, Tatum, both expected to play, but their price points, field price about right in an awful matchup against Miami. Um, you know, Smart and White's price was one up a little bit when they had the team to themselves. Horford is now back. I would expect the starting lineup. Uh, to be Horford at the five, Grant Williams at the four, Tatum, Brown, and Marcus Smart. So Williams, two prices for me, Grant Williams at 4.8. Horford, I do think is a, a decent option at 5.9. If we get 30 to 35 minutes from him at the center position, I think he's a fair play. And then you probably get them back up uh, five run for Daniel Tice, but his price also went up to 4.6K. So a little bit hard to get to him. Charlotte and New York, uh, LaMelo Ball is finally getting pretty consistent minutes, right? The issue was a couple weeks ago, he's just only playing like 30 minutes a game. We're now we're seeing 39, 34, 37, 34 over the last four games. Uh, he's gone for 50 plus in three of the last four. So even though the Knicks play a little bit slower, I still think uh, LaMelo Ball is a good option there at the top. Bridges, Rogier, both in play for tournaments. Bridges has played much better of late. I think he's viable. Rogier, we talk about this all year, right? He goes on stretches. There's stretches where he averages like 50 fans points a game, and there's stretches where he struggles like he is now, where he's averaging like 25 to 30 a game. So he's a very up and down player, but the ceiling is still there. Washington, just a fair option in the mid-range. Plumlee, Harrell, I guess you can take a shot at one of those guys in tournaments, but don't feel great about either of the minutes. On the Knicks side, so not a lot that stands out. I like the matchup. I think Randall's decent at 9-3. Did only play 28 minutes last game, but I would expect him to go back to like mid-30s minutes in this one. I think he's a fine contrarian play. Barrett at 8-1. Again, okay contrarian option too, but nothing that really stands out. Uh, Mitchell Robinson, we know is a ceiling. He played 35 minutes last game and smashed. He does have that upside, but he also has an extremely low floor because he's foul prone. Quickly, fine GBP play off the bench as well, but nothing that stands out on the next side. Minnesota and Toronto, um, tougher spot here for the Timberwolves. Cat, Edwards, and Russell all in play for tournaments. Patrick Beverly is a fair play at 4-9. I would expect him to play, you know, Close to 30 minutes. He's been bad last couple games, but other than that, you know, he's been relatively consistent when he's on the court. So uh, I think he's, an, he's a decent option. Ownership should be pretty low. Vanderbilt, the minutes have been up and down on him, so hard to trust him right now. No Beasley, no McDaniels. Jalen Noel uh, should get a good chunk of minutes off the bench. He played 27 off the bench last game, kind of playing that Malik Beasley role. So I do think Noel is viable at 3-5, especially if we get 27 uh, minutes again from him. On the Raptors side, it's a little bit tricky because, like, the starting five is now healthy. So, like, the value, I'm completely off. 
Um, I think the main guys like Siakam and Van Fleet are decent options. Probably would lean Siakam over Van Fleet. It's been much more consistent over the last month. Scotty Barnes is too pricey. Gary Trent Jr. and OG Anadubi, these guys should play big minutes. Gary Trent Jr. is super score independent. OG, again, if he plays like 35-ish minutes, he's a relatively safe option. Um, but yeah, that's it for Toronto. All right, Sacramento and Houston. So uh, two bad teams going up against each other. Two teams have played no defense. This is an interesting game here. So uh, David Mitchell at 7-6. I know that feels pricey, but he's going to play big minutes no matter what, right? We talked about that on the uh, Winter Tilt podcast. Um that's why we took the over on David Mitchell points was, um, you know, he's playing if the game stays competitive or if the game blows out, he's playing. So you don't really have to worry about blowout risk or David Mitchell because he's going to be on the court. So they're just playing him in as many minutes as he can handle. It's a good matchup. I think he's still in play at seven six. He's gone for 46, 38, 48, and 40 over the last four games. So I still think he's fine. Harrison Barnes at five, nine, um, you know, has played 40 and 38 minutes over the last couple games. I think he's a pretty safe option in the mid range. Trey Lyles at 5'7". If we get around 30 minutes from him, he's, you know, viable for me. DiVincenzo as well should see around 30 minutes. Kind of just looks okay, both those guys. Damian Jones at 4'8", you know, should see 25 to 30 minutes. I think he's a fair value play. Probably don't get to a guy like Holiday. You can look to Met too, but his minutes are a little bit riskier off the bench, but it'll be more productive. I think he's in play for tournaments. Um, so, yeah, that's it for Sacramento on the Houston side. So, no wood. Uh, no Schroeder, no Eric Gordon, and possibly no Sengun. So um, we will keep an eye on that news. I would assume if Sengun cannot play, it's going to be KJ Martin that picks up the start. And if he does, he's going to stand out as one of the best values in the slate at 3.6K. And then and then it might be, uh, we might be looking to a guy uh, from the Summer Olympics, and that would be Usman Garuba of uh, Spain's team. He was on Spain's team. He was a guy that, you know, we played at DFS at times, but... He could honestly pick up the start. I would expect, though, to be KJ Martin and, and Garuba playing the backup five. Um, but Garuba is a guy that would be playable at the flat men price. So we'll keep an eye on the starting lineup. But I think Garuba's in play. They do also have Bruno Fernando. But it looks like Garuba is ahead of Fernando uh, in the rotation. So I think he would get that, you know, uh, backup five run over Fernando. As far as the other guys going to Houston, so I like KPJ and Jalen Green, especially if Sengun is out. It's just like you're looking around. It's like, all right, who's going to score the ball for this team? Again, no Schroeder, no Gordon. They're thin, great matchup. If we get mid-30s minutes and KPJ and Green, I think both are in play. And Jalen Green played 40 minutes last game. So the two uh, Houston guards I like. I think Jay Sean Tate's fine at 4-5. He played 28 minutes last game. That looks okay. Christopher had a massive game off the bench. He played 30 minutes. I think he has a lot of uh, an opportunity to play a good chunk of minutes in this game. I'm intrigued by him. Um, again, Gordon's out. You probably get Garrison Matthews starting 25 to 30 minutes is a fair guess. He has not been great, but again, he does have a ceiling, can knock down his shots. Um, but yeah, I, they're going to be relatively thin, Houston. So KPJ is one. If Sengun is out, it'll be KPJ one, Green two, Tate three, Christopher four, Martin five, Rashawn Nix six, uh, Garrison Matthews seven. They did sign Anthony Lamb to two way contract. Um, so that would be eight. And then the two bigs, I believe, in Fernando and Garuba. So I believe if if um, Sengun is out, it would be 10 active players. Now, if Sengun plays, I think you can use him. Uh, you know, should start, should play low 30s minutes. So keep an eye on that news. If Sengun does play, I think he's viable. Atlanta and OKC. Again, 132 points for Trey Young. Or 132 points for the Hawks. I buy into Trey Young. Best possible matchup. Stays close. 14 points for Trey Young. And a bust. So this game does have low risk, but the ceiling is there for, for Trey. But Donovan just played extremely well at the bench. No issue going there. Capella should play around 30 minutes. Like his ceiling is on for 40 plus back-to-back -back games. Keep an eye on Gall Gallinari and Hunter. If they are both out, then Herter, Wright, TLC, even a guy like Jalen Johnson probably sees some minutes. Uh, but more, more so, like TLC played... 30 minutes last game, he would be a potential value. DeLon Wright, I believe, played over 30 minutes. He would be in play for value. So keep an eye on Hunter and Gallinari. If they're both out, there's going to be some value here in the Hawks. On the Thunder side, so keep an eye on Trey Mann news. So Trey Mann plays, I believe it's going to be nine active players. If he can't, it should be an eight-man rotation again. So um, you did see overtime, so you got to factor that in last game. But, you know, Pokoshevsky, Roby will both be in play. Roby, we know, is a good point from a guy. Played 33 minutes in regulation, so... Uh, would like him for tournaments. Again, Pokashevsky should play big minutes. He's a guy that can kind of do everything. He had a slow start last game. 
Maladon started at the point, played 35 minutes in regulation. I think he would look pretty good there in the mid-range. Wiggins had a really good game in, in 35 minutes in regulation. I think he would look pretty good. Waters, Vit, Saar would all be playable. You did see, surprisingly, huge minutes for Saar last game. Played 35 minutes. We know he has been super productive, but if we get the similar minutes, then yeah, you can use them. I probably don't get to JRE just because they took it easy on his minutes, unless we get confirmation that there's no more limitations on JRE. So yeah, Thunder are definitely appealing team, especially if Man is out, because then they'll have an eight-man rotation. If Man is in, just makes everyone a little bit riskier. All right, Memphis and San Antonio. So the Memphis Grizzlies without John Moran, I guess it's the best team to ever play basketball, right? They just blow out everyone. I said Jaron Jackson Jr. out too? Doesn't matter. It's going to blow out every team. So um, yeah, if, uh, you know, John Moran already is out. If Jaron Jackson Jr. is out, then slow-mo should pick up a start, should see around 30 minutes. I think he would be a solid value. You would see more minutes for Brandon Clark off the bench. He'll play kind of the backup four, backup five. He would look pretty good for value. And then uh, the main guys, like Bain, has a ceiling. But again, there's been so many blowouts recently that he hasn't played his full complement of minutes. Dylan Brooks, we know a little bit score independent, but does have a ceiling if he can knock down his shots. I think Tyus Jones is very safe as long as the game stays competitive. Should play 30 to 35 minutes. It was on pace for another solid game last game, and it was a blowout. So I like Tyus Jones once again. Melton's minutes a little bit more in question, but he's gone. He's played really well last four games, 30-plus fans points in every single game. Um, don't know if it gets to the likes of like what Williams or Conchar, I would rather, you know, value just go to like slow-mo or Clark for a little bit more on the Spurs side. So DeJounte Murray 11, two, well, um, they have a chance to make the play in, right? So then the Lakers fighting for that last spot right now. And DeJounte Murray should play big Mets, play 38 Mets last game. I think he's a solid spend up. Um, you know, if the game's just competitive, he's going to play huge minutes. Now, Pirtle at 7K, minutes haven't been great in him. I know there's been some foul trouble, but they're kind of capping him at around 30 minutes, which makes it hard for me to get to him. Calden just seems priced about right at 6.9. We also have Lonnie Walker coming back, so I don't know if he gets to like, so like Vassell or Richardson or, or Primo. Zach Collins has been playing the backup five. Again, he's been playing a little bit more. Pirtle's minutes have been going down a bit. So if we get around 20 minutes from Zach Collins, I think he's a decent value. He has gone for 20-plus now in the last three games. Phoenix and Golden State, so... Um, on the Phoenix side, I mean, uh, Booker, Paul, definitely in play. We know Booker as a ceiling becomes a little bit riskier, though, with Paul back, just as he becomes more score independent. Chris Paul himself, um, last game played 36 minutes, so clearly there's no limitations. Uh, if we get 36 minutes again from Chris Paul, I do think he's a little bit underpriced. So I like CP3. Aiton, he's up, he's down, he has a ceiling, but more of a tournament play for me. Uh, don't think I get to Bridgers or Campaign. They're too pricey. I'll mention with Mickey out, Biembo's the backup five. If you do, for some reason, get eight in foul trouble, you could see Bismack Biembo come in in a really good game. But more often than not, he's probably only playing about 15 minutes. On the Warriors side, it's a tougher spot here. But the two main guards that are in play, Poole and Thompson, I think both play around 40 minutes of the game. So he's competitive. Poole should be the main playmaker here. So I still like Jordan Poole. I think Clay Thompson's a little bit riskier, but still is a ceiling. We saw it two games ago. Not getting to Wiggins, not getting to Green. I just don't trust the minutes on anyone else in this Warriors team. I don't know what's going to happen. I hate Steve Kerr with a passion. If you want to try to take a shot in like a Kaminga or a Porter or Looney or a Peyton, go for it. I'm just telling you, I'm just not messing with it in 11 game slate. Just moving on. I hate Steve Kerr. All right, New Orleans and Portland. So Jonas Valanciunas is questionable. We'll expect him to play, though. He was questionable last game and did end up playing. So CJ, JV, Ingram all in play. Keep an eye on the Ingram news. Last game, he was limited to 26 minutes. Still smashed. If we get confirmation, there's no more limit at Ingram. I think he's a really solid play at 7-3. Probably would be my favorite option. But, yeah, phenomenal matchup if the game can stay competitive. That's a big if, though, because this Portland team is awful, awful. But, yeah, the CJ, JV, Ingram all in play. Really only looking to the main guys. I don't think I get to anyone else. Nance, you know, has been playing around 20 minutes. It just makes everyone else risk here. So, just some main guys I'm looking to on the Pelicans. And, finally, the Portland Trailblazers. So, I believe they're going to have 10 active players. Eubanks 1, Williams 2, LB3, Johnson 4, Dunn 5, Macklemore 6, Hughes 7, Belvins 8, uh, DD Lozuda, or whatever his name is, is 9. And then they signed Reggie Perry. I believe he'll be available in this game. That, that should be 10. So um, it's no longer an eight-man rotation, so it's a little bit tricky. Also, you have Greg Brown that might play. I think he's he's probable. So that, that actually would be 11 players. So I honestly don't think I get to anyone on Portland. Um, I know they they all a few of these guys had really good games last game. That was a different situation, right? That was an eight-man rotation. This could possibly be an 11-man rotation. So price points are up in the likes of Eubanks and Williams and Ellaby and Keon Johnson and Malcolm Moore. I don't trust any of it on this slate. So if you want to try to take a shot on those guys and hope the minutes are there, go for it. What I'm worried about is they get absolutely destroyed, play all 11 guys. Everyone plays for 20 to 25 minutes. Don't think it's a situation I want to mess with on this 11-game slate. So 
that's going to wrap it up for the video, guys. Uh, again, if you do enjoy the YouTube videos, just make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Make sure, uh, again, if you're playing prize fix, check out the uh, win or tilt show that we're doing every single day with Mark. Uh, doing some coffee giveaways as well if our five pick play hits. And we were, again, point two away from it hitting tonight. Unreal stuff. But appreciate all your support as always, guys. Have a good night, and I'll see you all in the next video.